Good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Schaefer. I am the Executive Director for the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us this morning for our roundtable on the need for mental health funding uh, for counties and for our communities here in the Commonwealth. As state budget negotiations continue ahead of the 2024-2025 fiscal year, counties are continuing to highlight the desperately needed increases in state funding for mental health services. We have with us today Jeff Snyder, Clinton County Commissioner, Pamela Howard, Montgomery County Department of Health and Human Services, Office of MHDD and EI, Andrea Kepler, Dauphin County Mental Health Administrator, and George Hartwick, Dauphin County Commissioner, to talk with us a little bit about what they are seeing uh, in the need in their communities. Before I turn things over to them, specifically, our counties are calling for a significant increase in county mental health services separate from other state investments in mental health services. So a call for about $250 million in an increase, which is really only a fraction of more than $1.2 billion in additional funds counties have identified uh, as being needed to stabilize and begin rebuilding Pennsylvania's crumbling mental health system. The time is now putting off a substantial investments into county-based mental health services only continues to place the burden on property taxpayers just to maintain the fraying threads of the system. We've been asked on many occasions how counties would use an increase in funds, and we surveyed our counties last month, and we'll drop a link in the chat, a report that includes several pages of examples direct from counties. But our panelists are here today to provide some of those direct examples of the situation in their communities, and we'll begin with some comments from each of them, then open the floor to the media for questions. So I will call on each of our panelists in turn, talk a little bit about the need you're seeing your community uh, for mental health services and how an increase in state funding could make a difference in addressing that need. So with that, um, I will turn things over to Commissioner Snyder to kick us off. Thank you very much, Lisa, and it's a privilege to be here and thank you all for being here and allowing us this opportunity to bring this very important issue to light. Uh, I represent Clinton County, as Lisa said, a rural county and we need to address how money is being allocated, especially to rural counties. The money should be allocated to need and not population. Smaller counties have the same issues as the larger counties, but many of our residents, because we cannot provide those services, have to travel to larger counties. And again, Clinton County has no public transportation system, so that's that's another issue into itself. We have no long-term secure resident shelters with full-time nursing, nursing staff. Uh, this is part of the broken system because there's no continuum of services. We also need to address how the funding comes through in flat funding. It does not give us an opportunity to sit down with the providers and provide the needed services. So there's some of the issues that are important to rural counties at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I can now turn things over to Pam Howard. Hi, good morning. Thanks so much for this conversation. It is a really important one. Um, you know, when I think about the dollar, these dollars, I really um, think hard about what we can spend them on. And these are really the dollars that are meant to be used to pay for things that insurance doesn't pay for. One of the biggest things uh, that we use uh, the, the county mental health dollars for um, in Montgomery County that come from the state are for our residential and housing programs. I think back to when I started my career uh, back in the 90s. Um, and you know, at that time, there were over a thousand beds, I think close to 1500 civil state hospital beds um, that serve the Southeast region of Pennsylvania. Today, there are 30 beds. And that is wonderful because we were able to move people out of institutions and live in our communities. But that's, the, that's what you are referring to, Lisa, in terms of this shaky system that has been underfunded for quite some time. Uh, one of the biggest things that when I think about new funding is I have to think about going backwards to stabilize what we have, while at the same time, we wanna be innovative and start new things and really pay attention to our crisis system um, and solving issues with homelessness. Uh, so it's, it's really a challenge because you wanna be doing both. Uh, so there's really important issues out there. Thank you, Pam. And to provide some perspective then from Dolphin County, similarly, uh, Andrea, would you like to share? Thank you uh, for the invitation. I want to reiterate uh, Pam's emphasis on the importance of this ongoing conversation. 
as I enter my 47th year in mental health services, specifically in central Pennsylvania, I can't emphasize enough the absolute disaster that is looming in our immediate future. In Dauphin County, uh, services and demand for those services, uh, specifically for mental health, has risen to 5% of our population, uses some service funded either through health choices or base funded services. And it's those base dollars that are of concern in this conversation today. How Dauphin County utilizes those dollars is to support people through case management services, those who are uninsured, underinsured, as well as with a form of case management known as administrative case management. Those are all base funded services. Today, we support a total of almost 2,000 individuals with these services. 300 are on the wait list for those services. The second large category of how we utilize our resident or dollar base dollars is for residential supports as described by Pam. We too operate residential services that currently support 189 adults. These providers, as well as all other mental health providers have been chronically underfunded. We have only been able to meet some of their expenditures over the years. Since the sizable cut that was taken on our budget since 2013 and has never been restored, we have barely covered those operational expenditures. And just as we feel in our personal lives, costs for food, utilities, insurance have all increased let alone the big catastrophe, and that is maintaining staff. So today we are eliminating 40 moderate level care CRR beds. So what happens to all of those that are waiting for uh, services for residential, that's 67 adults in total. So I will stop there because I emphasize the two major points, case management supports for people who are coming out of county jail, state mental hospitals, SCIs, we're envisioning a total of 40 people being released from SCIs just this year alone. We have no case management supports for them and we have no residential supports. Um, we're asking the legislature, where do we go with these kinds of concerns? Thank you, Andrea. And Commissioner Hartwick to follow up with the Dolphin County perspective. I'm gonna follow up uh, where sort of Pamela left off. We, we actually had a promise and Andrea was a part of that transition and making the uh, actual transition from the Harrisburg State Hospital into the community in Dauphin County. And we agree that that was a great move. But the promise was that there would be a system that was built that was you know, far less restrictive, community-based, allowing to have access from folks at an earlier stage and the ability for us to maintain and invest in that system as the needs have changed and increased. The real story is uh, we've gotten less money and our base funds, there's a big confusion as well related to the funding, you know, from the ability for us to use managed care dollars to base funds. I think we could probably start with a little bit of, uh, of an education to the legislature about how these dollars are used and the importance of having these dollars and the, the de minimis amount of money that we are going to get. And we are grateful for any additional monies, but that's really only going to keep the doors open for providers as costs, as Andrea noted, continue to rise. The sad fact is that our jails have become the number one provider of mental health services and our emergency rooms are packed. We are at the local level trying to be as innovative as we can, working across county lines, figuring out ways to solve the problems. Instead of pointing fingers, we wanna create the solutions. But as a part of that is to be able to have a funding partner that understands their level of commitment that of what it's going to take to sustain these front end services, as well as deal with an affordable housing crisis that is a huge, factor in trying to transition folks from a correction facility or an institution back into the community. So the needs are great. The flexibility of these base funds are also great, but the idea of having additional resources rather than less since the closure of state hospital is something we absolutely need to lobby for. And today, I think our ask is 250 million, but it, from an overall system perspective, we're asking for 1.2 million over the next five years. Thank you to all of our panelists for providing all of that perspective. That's very helpful context to understand what's actually going on in our communities. A couple of follow-up questions. I think that I, you know, I think we could tease out a little bit, and and certainly, you know, feel free to jump in on any question that, that sparks your interest here. 
but you know you talked some about you know about that need that you're seeing among your residents if, if you had to say where that area of the greatest impact is in your community so not just what all the need is but the greatest impact what, what would you say that is is it is it youth is it outpatient therapy crisis uh, i know you know we've talked a little bit about the transition out of our our prisons and jail systems if you could say what that greatest need is what would that look like yeah lisa i think crisis really strikes a chord for me in Montgomery County, I think, you know, when we have conversations with our police chiefs and they talk about, you know, the calls that they're responding to in the community, uh, they really highlight mental health crisis as something that's going on in all different areas of our county. And one of the things that I really want people to help people understand is that when we send a mobile crisis team out to many homes in our community, mm -hmm. that that very often is paid for out of the county-based dollars. If someone in my home, and I have a good insurance through my job, um, if someone in my home had a mental health crisis tonight and the mobile crisis team came out to help um, people work through that crisis, what would happen is that the county would pay for that visit because insurance doesn't cover a lot of our crisis services the way that they exist in Pennsylvania. 30% of crisis users in Dauphin County have third-party insurance. Third-party insurance is not required to pay for crisis services. They will pay for clinical services if uh, it is billed that way, but it will not pay for what we call bundled crisis response services. Here in Dauphin County, we are partnered with Cumberland Perry counties to open a crisis response center by the end of 2024. We have sustainability only through 2728. Beyond that, we need insurance parity and we need ongoing sustainability to assure the crisis response system that we're envisioning. Lisa, it's very difficult to zero in on maybe one one thing is a need, but I think for us, uh, more attention needs to be paid to mental health issues with children. Um, right now, 40% of our population in our county facility uh, is housed there, as Commissioner Hartwick referred to in, in his situation in Dolphin County. We have the same thing here. 40% of our adults in, in our facility have mental health issues, and we do not have the support services when they leave the prison for that continuum of care. We need to start addressing more efforts in with children. We have no facilities in Clinton County for children, no group homes, no place, no shelters for them. And in severe cases, we end up having to unfortunately transport them away from their families, even out of count, out of state. Um, that's one issue that I think really needs to um, have more dollars put into so that we can correct these uh, issues early on for these youth so they don't have to uh, continue to be a problem for the courts or even end up in a state hospital uh, facility later on in life. I mean, so I, I believe, oh, go ahead. No, I believe please, Commissioner Snyder is referring to actually the complex cases that we see through our both dependency and delinquency system. We've done a great job of not casting a wider net, but the individuals that we do currently serve have much more complex needs. And there is a real lack of placement opportunities for individuals. They oftentimes sit in our own children and youth waiting rooms and, and hospital beds for extended periods of time because of the inability to serve their complex needs or providers that are willing to accept and, and actually provide a level of service for those individuals. So obviously adolescent, Behavioral health is huge, and we've seen a market increase since the pandemic. Uh, but also, even any new money that comes into the system, we talk about the monies that are coming into schools, to ensure that those dollars are being coordinated and planned for in an overall system build out, rather than creating any new dollars should be used in the most efficient and effective way possible. And for us to be able to work with school districts and have some guidelines about what we are actually being able to establish and coordinating from the county's level needs to occur, or else we, again, will create additional duplication. And I've heard many cases where, you know, the idea of metal detectors were bought with new monies for children's mental health. And ultimately we would like to see a family be served. Oftentimes that is in a school setting, but to coordinate and ensure that we're receiving a service level that's coordinated and a part of a larger system delivery is really important related to the county being at the table. 
Right. I don't want to detract for the need for additional funding for public education, but to do so uh, without simultaneously paying attention to the services that support our children 12 months out of every year, um, including the summer, including uh, services that support the family and in-home uh, necessary critical supports is nothing short of naive. And I say that quite boldly, but I believe it. We are currently supporting children who need IBHS services, and we can't get those services to them because they live in the rural section of our county. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with how we cannot um, enhance um, uh, rate payment rates to ensure that there is coverage for every child who is in need of services. So consequently, where we end up is when what goes on at home deteriorates and children end up on waiting lists for RTFs. And there are no positive outcomes that research has ever demonstrated from use of an RTF. Currently, Dauphin County, and I say this rather proudly because of efforts Andrew. in the past, serve 22 kids in RTFs. And we if have- I can, Andrea, can you waiting. just tell everyone what an RTF is? Residential treatment facility. It is the only out of home uh, residential support currently available for children in a treatment setting. We need additional funding for professional help. In our county, we have advertised for over a year for a psychologist position, and we've been unable to fund it because the salary is not attractive enough to fill that position. Uh, and we also have trouble getting psychiatrists. Those issues need to be addressed so we have the professional staff available to supply the, the services that we need for not only youth, but adults also. Commissioner, Go I would ahead. emphasize the point, we need everybody. It used to be doctors we lacked. It used to be doctors and nurses. And then we got to therapists. We don't have sufficient direct support professionals yeah. either. The people who staff our 24-7 settings in group homes, we don't have people willing to do that work anymore. That was my first job in human services. I know how hard that job is but we don't have people who are willing to commit themselves to doing that level of work. And we need them. We need to compensate them with decent, affordable wages. In Dauphin County, we're struggling to get to $19 an hour. I don't know of anyone who can pay for housing, transportation, and food and utilities on $19 an hour. But that's what some we of the residential me. programs are even less than that, Andrea. And I think yep. that where this is where we have living people who have some of our most significant needs. And we're competing with places like Target and McDonald's and Chick-fil-A to to pay, you know, a solid salary. And the other issue is, you know, uh, Commissioner Hartwick said is it to make the best use of dollars. So very often what happens is some of the provider organizations have to pay for temporary staff, which come at a higher cost mm -hmm. because we're not starting off with a sufficient salary. Um, and that's really not the best use of these dollars. So I think that, you know, what we really have to do is have be able to shore up these programs, offer living wages to the staff that work in them. Uh, so that they, we can have a steady staffing patterns for all of our residential programs. So let me ask you this then, you know, so we talked about the, the county need for, you know, the $250 million increase in, in community mental health services in the current fiscal year, so the, the fiscal year that runs from July 1 of 23 to June 30th of this year, counties received a $20 million increase in state funding for mental health services. So how did or didn't that help your county? That uh, translated to $374,000 for Dauphin County, which um, probably backed up uh, utility expenditures for one residential program this year. That's how far it got us. It got us nowhere close to needing to expand services or to address waiting list issues. If you calculate that by three, because I believe that was the original proposal, a $20 million increase over three years, that doesn't even restore that 10% or 20% cut that we sustained in 2013. That amount was $2.1 million. So it's just simple math. How is anyone expected to do this work, continue this work, grow services without any decent COLA? When I say our providers have been chronically underfunded, that is no misstatement. 
I think we're in a very similar position too. It, that's where I get to, you know, where, where we're, we had to make some of these choices. We had to think about, do we go forward and bring new things into our system? Or do we look back behind us at the things that are on such rocky ground? And I think we had to do a little bit of both to invest in our crisis system um, and hope, like Andrea was saying too, that we will be able to have the sustainability of things that we are working to build, while at the same time, we're trying to shore up the existing programs where some of our providers have been cutting staff and increasing the caseload sizes over time in order to make do with, with the limited funding that we had for so long. In fiscal year 24-25, our residential providers received a half a million dollars less than what they said they needed to do the job. To me, that, that spells a disaster looming in the future. And that is with reducing our CRR beds by 40. Half a million short, and we're reducing 40 beds. Andrea knows this painfully. I approve every contract in and this year, the sustainability of any of those min de minimis increases that we had to approve cannot be sustained without a significant budget increase. I mean, we are going to be forced probably mid-year to discuss what, what it is during this crisis that we have to cut. And uh, you know, what is great about counties is we never leave anybody hanging. We figure out a way to ensure that however we patch it together, folks will get a level of service. But we are at the breaking point. There is no more safety net. And ultimately, we are just triaging the next and most critical issue rather than building a system that is responsive to our community's needs. And as was mentioned, a lot of these cases are very serious cases and require a lot of follow-up paperwork. We are not able to fund for updated computers, laptops, software, hardware, and other miscellaneous items or any increase in the IT staff that even can support our caseworkers. And that's a huge issue that every county deals with. So as, as a closing question, then let me let me put it to you this way. If you could tell the legislature and the governor one thing about the current state of the mental health system, what would it be? We're at a breaking point. And you have to know that the only thing we're looking at is reducing further services because we just cannot manage to sustain, let alone provide more. We just don't have it. We can't do it. And if the counties aren't able to do it, um, then it's going to become a state issue. And and where are we there then? We're better off having uh, the services delivered at the county level. We can do it less expensively and more efficiently. It's already happening in Dauphin County. We have 29 allotted beds in the state hospital system. Today, we're occupying 37. That trend is only going to increase so to me, that's a clear decision. Do you want to put the money in county local services or do you want to add more state hospital beds? We're going backwards. Exactly. I think I would want the governor and the legislature to understand that the lack of investment in this part of our system really impacts other parts of our communities and other systems. And so I think like Commissioner Hartwick had said, we see more people sitting in emergency rooms waiting for beds. We see more people sitting in a psychiatric hospital because there is no place for them to move on to. We see people having longer stays than people without mental health challenges in our jails because there is nowhere for them to move on to. We see more people in our counties who are homeless, living in encampments, living in tents, because there are not the resources to help them move from there to housing and there's not housing for them either. So I think it really just, you can see where investing in this part of our system would just be so helpful to stop this um, sort of overflow into other systems. The majority of Dauphin County citizens who are admitted for inpatient services are no, are no longer being treated within the county. The majority who are involuntarily committed go elsewhere. So if you can imagine that being told you must go for inpatient services and then, oh, by the way, we're going to send you to Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or some other uh, county in the state. 
this is not good continuity of care. It makes it very difficult to plan and provide intensive services for people who have had to go so far for their inpatient services. My message would be one that's a little bit more strength-based. I know we've all expressed great frustration, but I, I know Governor Shapiro personally, I, I, and I know how deeply committed and concerned he is about this issue. I know, you know, Secretary Arkush, who was a uh, a colleague of ours here uh, from the county level, and really from a firsthand perspective, gets the crisis in which we're in. And finding creative solutions isn't going to happen from the top down. It's going to happen in partnership in a way that's going to allow us to figure out a way to build out a system that is supposed to be representative of, of the community-based system we were promised during the state hospital closure. But that won't happen without a commitment of resources and a real effort not just to pay it lip service. I, I think the House has it right. They've got a bipartisan caucus that is talking across political lines, trying to figure out ways to support uh, initiatives and uh, additional investment in mental health. We would hope the Senate would join them in, in the ability to actually uh, figure out a way to be a partner in this solution. So uh, I, I look forward. I don't want to point fingers. I'd rather be a part of a solution. And I know that we've got caring individuals that also want to be a part of that solution. I just want to figure out a way to stop giving it lip service and start coming up with some real budget dollars that can effectively help us build out our system. I want to say thank you to all of our panelists for sharing their experiences today. You know, it's really clear the need to rebuild the mental health system in Pennsylvania is at a crisis point, and the counties need the help of the legislature and administration to take those necessary and bold steps to support the mental health needs of our residents. Uh, if you'd like to see more details about counties and the way that we would use these mental health dollars and how we can support our communities and more about the, the county's mental health priority, please visit us online at www.pacounties.org. Again, thank you to all of our panelists today and hope you enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you.